Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Yang Ray in Beijing. As the world's most enduring and beloved conservation icon, the giant panda has just been downgraded from endangered to vulnerable on the global list of species at the risk of extinction, according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature on September the 4th. Meanwhile, China's State Forestry Administration has responded that it is too early to make such a judgment and stated its concern that if the panda conservation status were to be downgraded and the protection work is reduced, China's achievements would be quickly forgotten. So what progress has the Chinese government actually made during decades of giant panda conservation work? What can we learn from such a program of conservation? And how should we balance the relationship between humans and animals? To discuss these issues and more, I'm very happy to be joined in the studio by Liu Jian, Director of the International Ecosystem Management Partnership, United Nations Environment Program, and Dr. Zhu Chen, China Representative of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. But before we begin our discussion, let's take a look at this. These fuzzy creatures are loved all over the world both for their visual appeal, but also due to how few of them there are. China's giant pandas are perhaps the most well-known endangered animal species on Earth. But according to the Switzerland-based International Union for Conservation of Nature, that's no longer the case. The organization has reclassified the panda from endangered to vulnerable, noting that the wild panda population jumped to 1,864 in 2014 from less than 1,600 a decade ago, representing a remarkable reversal on the previous decline. China's efforts to protect pandas include expanding bamboo forests and enforcing poaching bans, in April this year, one man was sentenced to 13 years in prison for killing a wild panda and selling its meat. But experts say conservation efforts have to continue. Main reasons we shouldn't be complacent is you're still only talking about just over 2,000 individuals. So this is still not a massive population that's completely safe forever. Experts also warn that the good news could be short-lived that panda's natural bamboo habitat is facing threats from mining and construction projects as well as the effects of global warming. And also that with particular threats like climate change and particularly growing human populations and all the things that we want from food to forestry to timber products, you've got to continue to build on these programs and, uh, and, and keep it going for the long term. However, China has expressed concerns over the IUCN's downgrading of the panda's conservation status. The State Forestry Administration says that achievements could be quickly forgotten if funding and technical support disappear as a result of the change in status. Pandas aren't the only endangered, or should we now say, vulnerable species in China, but they do receive the most care and protection. They're on loan to a number of countries as a goodwill gesture and have long been regarded as China's national treasure. For now, panda lovers can breathe a sigh of relief knowing that these special animals are no longer on the verge of extinction. Gentlemen, uh, many here in China would wish that the image of China should be compared to giant panda instead of the uh, vicious looking dragon <laughs> for some apparent reasons. But my question is really about uh, is it too early to make this judgment that uh, giant pandas should be downgraded from uh, endangered to vulnerable? Uh, well, uh, the whole world uh, was excited for this uh, great news. That reflects uh, China's uh, effort in the past decades uh, to conserve the giant panda. That's a uh, very success. So uh, IUCN reassessments of IUCN red list of threatened species have very specific and rigorous requirements. So basically, uh, uh, based on uh, a uh, thorough review of the published uh, scientific uh, literatures, and more importantly, also look state forest administration's national survey of giant panda. That happens since the 1970s, so far already four times. So that, that lists all the information. So based on a team of uh, assessors, they are carefully uh, examination about the status of giant panda 
the population and uh, the expansion of habitat, and then to uh, meet with this uh, criteria and also have like a peer review by the independent experts. IUCN also have the internal quality control. So that's the result, no doubt. It's reflect the great success of China's government, great efforts in the past uh, several decades. So that's a great news. But we, uh, we shouldn't see the conservation of the giant panda we, uh, so we can relax it. But actually, the conservation and the loss of the habitat fragmentation and so on, the stress is competing. So uh, it does not mean we should not to uh, continue the efforts, but uh, we, we even like to increase our efforts for conservation giant panda. You have indeed delivered a strong voice about uh, not being complacent in conserving the endangered animal of a giant panda. But uh, what is the uh, precise and accurate official figure about the population of giant pandas? Okay, the, based on the fourth survey, the total number of uh, giant panda is 1,864. That's, that's the, by, by the national wide survey. You so mean that's the population of pandas in China? Yes. What uh, about the whole number around the world? Actually, uh, pan giant panda is an endemic species. Only uh, today, only distributed in China, in Sichuan, Shanxi, and Gansu provinces. So uh, to, today is only in China. That's China's total member, number. It is the world's total number. Well, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature's latest assessment says that the decision to downgrade the giant panda to vulnerable is a positive sign confirming the Chinese government's efforts to conserve the species. I'd like to have your comments. Uh, actually, um, perhaps I should um, uh, reverse the word in uh, downgrading the status of the giant panda. Perhaps to me, it's kind of upgrading the status of the giant panda from endangered to vulnerable uh, kind of category. And, and this is, uh, uh, to us, a kind of recognition of the achievement of the Chinese government in uh, conserving the giant panda and its habitat uh, in the past decades. And uh, the world blessed and recognized the efforts so, uh, so to start with, this is a kind of upgrading, uh, not necessarily kind of downgrading. Of course, the Chinese government has been uh, transforming its policy in the past through, uh, for example, uh, development first, um, it, say in the 1970s and 80s, towards uh, conservation um, kind of oriented uh, development policy. So, and uh, if you look at the uh, great initiative, the, the Natural Forest uh, Conservation Program that is funded by the Chinese government and also the uh, Grand for Green uh, policy to set aside the sort of uh, vulnerable ecosystems for habitats of the biodiversity. That's a great effort that has been done. And coming back to Janda Panda, I think this is kind of um, what I call a flagship uh, um, animal a flagship uh, kind of species that represents all the endangered species. So far too long, we've been hearing all the negative news. Uh, the killing of the elephants in Africa, the killing of the rhinos in Africa, the killing of the tigers in China. Uh, but here, I think uh, through this assessment, IUCN is sending a very positive message uh, to the rest of the world uh, that things can be done and can be done better. So this is, uh, I think, a very positive message. So, Has the National People's Congress, our top legislature, passed any laws to protect the giant panda? Uh, not yet. Uh, but the, uh, uh, to protect the giant panda is reflected by the wildlife law of People's Republic of China. Do not have a specific law yet. I mean, uh, any laws that protect, that aims to protect wild animals. So wildlife uh, protection yeah. is the law that yeah. has been enacted yeah. by the Standing Committee of the uh, National People's Congress. Um, what has been done to promote the protection, I mean, in terms of its habitats, the wild hunting, mm -hmm. as well as uh, sources of nutrition? Uh, it, it has been done uh, a lot of work since the 19, early uh, 1960s. 
the first three giant panda uh, nature reserve was created in 1961. So uh, that's including uh, La Bahe, uh, Wolong, and Wang Lang. Mm -hmm. So the first group of uh, protected area in China, it is uh, established for protect the giant panda. So afterwards, uh, especially uh, uh, the after 90, uh, uh, early 1980s, so when China opened, now have open policy and reform, then welcomed by the International Union for Conservation Nature and Natural Resources, IUCN and WWF, they paid a visit to China, sign a MOU with Chinese government to start to protect the uh, giant panda. That's in the back to uh, 1980s. But the Chinese government and also uh, put a great effort. For instance, uh, the protected area, so uh, 10 years ago, only around 40. But uh, today, already more than, already 67. That means about 70% uh, of increase of the number of protected area, specifically established for protect, protecting giant panda. As you can see, the, the, the biggest inv investment, but not, not only uh, create so many protected area, but also for, for instance, ban of logging natural forest and the return the steep slope, agricultural land to forest, and also like to have this uh, giant panda uh, protection program. This, all these great efforts, it is do contribute to the giant panda conservation in China. I believe giant pandas must have been left quite puzzled as to why draconian family planning policies have been carried out for the humans. Uh, they enjoy the special protection. Now, what about the uh, birth rate of giant panda? Uh, artificial insemination has been employed to help create more babies. Is that measure very effective? Well, I, I don't have the exact figure of the birth rate, but uh, my general knowledge is the birth rate is very low. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it has to be um, in a way that one way you create a very good habitat for them to uh, make a living in the wild, in wilderness. And the other way, the sort of scientific measures, the sort of um, uh, gene transplantation, sort of uh, cloning uh, technology, that could be uh, also uh, uh, deployed to increase uh, the population of the giant panda to a sizable community so that uh, they could sustain themselves. Thank you very much. We are Joined here in the studio discussion by Mr. Liu Jian, Director of the International Ecosystem Management Partnership, United Nations Environment Program, and Dr. Zhu Chunquan, China Representative of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. We'll be back in a short while. Please stay with, with us. Welcome back, gentlemen. Can you brief us on the ability of the giant pandas to deliver birth uh, in the wildness? Uh, actually, the giant panda in the wild, the breeding is not a limitation factor for the regeneration of this, uh, popular, this species. So normally, giant panda can be take birth one to three uh, babies, but the, the issue they need to really keep warm of the covers uh, after immediate birth. Uh, the survival rate actually at least one will be survived, and the generation regeneration it is uh, not a limitation factor in the world, but do have some problem for the captive breeding. What do you think of the image of a giant panda? Uh, now it's been used as a political symbol or a token of a friendship that's borrowed by our neighboring countries uh, as a special envoy to express the goodwill of the Chinese people and the Chinese government. But why? Why do you think this black and white animal is so popular with the people around the world, regardless of our political beliefs, sy systems, or skin colors? Actually, when, when you take a first look at the giant panda, the immediate keywords coming to your mind is kind, peaceful, uh, modest, humble, 
and clumsy, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes, yeah. Yeah, I actually, it's, it's really it's the sort of image that people will feel very comfortable in the first instance, uh, but also for longer term observation, you have the kind of image that it poses no threat, but also it consumes uh, very modest things, only bamboo, uh, m nothing but bamboo. Uh, if you uh, compare this with the current uh, discussion of green economy, sustainable consumption, uh, actually uh, the panda consumes a little, but offers quite a lot to the uh, wilderness and, and to the biodiversity. Those who did visit the zoo got a strong feeling that the black and white bear does not hurt people. Mm -hmm. And yet, in the Hollywood movie, Kung Fu Panda, <laughs> this animal has been transformed into a monster in a nice way. He is armed with uh, lethal Kung Fu to kill the enemy. Do you think that represents the American fear about China's rise? Such a lovely animal has been turned into a, a killer animal. That's so. Uh, uh, first of all, this movie, these films, do help to popularize the giant panda, so more and more people uh, learn about uh, the the animals. But actually, this may be uh, the films really take the like a uh, herbivores only eat bamboo as like a killer. That's like a uh, opposite of the humans, like a uh, uh, common understanding. I think that's maybe attract people. Perhaps Hollywood has missed Bruce Lee and Jack Lee so much. They decided <laughs> to use uh, uh, the cartoon image of a giant panda yes. to depict uh, the uh, martial arts that uh, seems to be a big myth uh, for those who are fans of the uh, martial arts. Now, instead of uh, sending panda as a gift, a free gift, mm. it seems increasingly panda is borrowed mm. instead of, uh, you know, being used as a gift. Is that because of the shrinking population? Is, is that also part of our efforts to protect the population of the giant pandas? Uh, actually, the giant panda, it, it is an endangered and a rare species. The population is uh, very limited, it's relatively small. And uh, back to uh, 19, early 1970s and the 1960 to 1970s, the population significant significantly decline. So uh, IUCN uh, like give this endangered species. So that's reflect this the the endemic and the uh, rare. So it's a treasure of nature and also of of China. So we like uh, we uh, cannot to give it away as a gift since limited of population in the world. And uh, uh, in the other world, actually, uh, by leasing of the giant panda, then we can generate income for uh, panda conservation in the world. So that that's also the another like an incentive or mechanism, not to give it as a gift, but by leasing, by pay annually, then to uh, uh, contribute to the wild giant panda conservation in China. Uh, uh, help to to saving uh, secure these species. But uh, other than the uh, alleged extinction of a giant panda, which, however, uh, has been uh, very well protected uh, for decades by the Chinese government, what about other endangered species such as uh, uh, the ape, the mm. the eastern gorilla, Great is ice. now on the critically endangered list joining three other great ape species. Mm. Yeah, actually the great apes are the uh, one of the most endangered species, I would say, without tanking the IOCN list. But uh, I was in Africa for a while and uh, I was with the UNEP. And UNEP has a specific program protecting the great ape in East Africa. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, something that uh, they, they've been trying very hard and trying everything possible to find uh, each and every resources to uh, save them. But I, I think there are a lot uh, to learn from the Chinese experiences. Uh, and also uh, to work with the local community and to turn the sort of uh, eaters of the greater apes. Because some of the com African community, they just eat uh, the apes. 
the meat of the apes uh, for ceremonies and, uh, and and so on. So, and those kind of hi uh, habits should be changed, and and transformed to a more uh, pro environment uh, kind of culture. And, and have it. But in the meantime, the international society, because these indigenous species, including panda, uh, they are the ones uh, that need to be uh, conserved uh, for the whole world. It's not that the great apes are for Africa or tiger or panda or for, the, for, for China. Uh, that's not the case. So uh, each every indigenous species has its own unique uh, global significance in terms of uh, uh, biodiversity conservation. For years, the media, along with the government, uh, have done a lot to educate Chinese people about the protection of animals. Mm -hmm. For example, the uh, dog meat festival in Yulin, mm -hmm. uh, Guilin province, has caused the media debates. Uh, public opinions are so seriously divided. Mm -hmm. With uh, giant panda being a very nice exception, mm -hmm. perhaps. Uh, unanimously uh, mm. people mm. do care about this uh, lovely mm. uh, charming animal mm. but um, international groups and the Chinese government have worked uh, to save wild pandas and breed them at enormous cost mm. uh, that has uh, triggered extensive criticism about the budget that's mm. been uh, allocated for mm. the care and protection of giant panda how controversial is this issue the uh, I actually like this. Uh, uh, the international community is really appreciate for the great effort of China, uh, Chinese government, and the local community, even business and uh, international organizations. So the that's showing like a joint efforts to protect the species uh, could like reverse the decline, significant decline of the population. So really can halt the, the risk to uh, uh, distinct. So I think that if from this point of view, the investment is worthwhile. Uh, actually, like uh, the, the investment for the giant panda conservation, but not only benefit by one species. So uh, giant panda as a uh, uh, Umbrella species, for example, we uh, protect the giant panda. We have to protect the forest, have to protect the bamboo, and also have to help the local communities. And the local community also can benefit from this investment. And also, uh, very important, the protect the ecosystems. Then the ecosystem can provide, like uh, the ecosystem services, for instance provide uh, the purified uh, water and uh, like uh, soil and water conservation, reduce soil re re erosion, and also uh, reduce the natural like uh, disaster, landslides and so on. So that's the benefit is multiple. It's not only, for example, we use giant panda as a flagger and flagship species, but not only benefit giant panda itself, as a benefit the local community, benefit the local economic, social economic development, and also benefit the downstream of, for, for instance, the Yangtze River. What do you think of the costs? Uh, well, uh, I think, uh, the, first of all, I agree with uh, Mr. Drew that the cost is worthwhile. Uh, but in the meantime, I fully understand that the Chinese government also spent uh, quite a lot of money conserving uh, many other endangered species, like the tiger. Uh, Siberian tiger. Siberian tiger uh, and, and, and uh, the Tibetan antelope, uh, the golden monkey. And, and actually, um, some of the species itself overlap. Um, and the coyotes, the sort of habitat provided for panda, as uh, Mr. Drew has already mentioned. But in the meantime, I think the government plan is not to lose any endangered species. And they do have a kind of balanced approach integrated uh, to protect all these endangered species. I wonder both of you have ever watched the latest movie, uh, Born in China. It was directed by Lu Chuan, and the whole crew came from Hollywood. What mm. message does this deliver? Uh, that's a very, uh, uh, very well uh, film, like uh, 
the great effort spent it years. It depicts a picture about the four kinds of animals, uh, yeah. giant panda, golden monkey, uh, snow leopard, as well as uh, Tibet Tibetan mm -hmm. antelope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is really icon species. Uh, most of them are endemic in China, only found in China. Mm -hmm. So this really like uh, promote to like biodiversity, uh, uh, wild animals, conservation, to get to the world to know more about China. So these two very good example, one is giant panda. So this very success conservation, this is from endangered to vulnerable. But giant, the Tibetan antelope is another very good example. So that, that's been in the back to 1980s from about 1 million population down to less than 70,000. That's a significant decline by the uh, great effort by Chinese government, central local government, NGOs, local communities, and the international collaboration. First got to, to cut the, like, the trade of satush, like products, and then great effort for create protected area and establish the protected stations. So then the Tibetan antelope is also a very lovely animal, like they migrated uh, across this uh, Tibetan plateau. So each summer you can see like a group of the female Tibetan antelope. This uh, always very like a uh, iconic uh, species in, in China, but by this film of them, it's really like a big promotion. And I think that's really uh, great. And then uh, Snow Leopard also uh, become better and well known by the uh, general public. I, I think the key message here is communication and dialogue. It's the start of the sort of communication between man and nature. Uh, the way that they present these kind of icon animals, icon species to us is to sort of um, uh, to have to give each animal uh, a kind of um, human feeling and you, you could just feel it so you, you through that uh, seeing that film uh, you basically totally change, change your mindset and you see they are as precious as we are as human beings so and uh, this is the sort of, um, I would say, uh, transformative way of awareness raising for conservation of these endangered species. Right, relationship uh, between and among those animals depicted yeah. in born in China could be compared to our human family life. Thank you very much for being with us on this edition of Dialogue. I'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye.